Mespin for that kind introduction. Thank you really everybody for the kind introduction and all of you for showing up. I know it's a work day, you probably worked all day and some of you have families to go home to so I appreciate you being here. I really, really wish this organization had existed when I was sort of a young Ethiopian professional. I feel kind of old now. Um, and I really hope that we can have actually a much more interactive session so I'm going to try to be brief. Instead of talking I think about my life from the beginning and how I got here, what I thought I would tell you a little bit about is some of my personal values that I truly cherish and how those values have sort of helped shape who I am today and how they've helped me in my career. And the first one is really change and embracing change. And I think we're all immigrants and Mesfin and the previous speaker talked about that. Um, we arrive here from, you know, either, you know, my family first moved to Kenya. So my first change was, you know, just moving to Kenya as a young person. It was the first time I went to a school where there were non Ethiopians and I had to speak something else outside of Amharic. It was traumatic, maybe the first couple of days, but I think it really, really helped me become the person I am today. I, you know, I saw that there was a world sort of outside of Ethiopia. There were other people, you know, other countries, other languages, other cultures, and, and since then I've actually volunteered and moved many times in my career. I, um, right before, um, Right before I went to graduate school, I spent the summer in Geneva. I moved from DC and just spent the summer in Geneva. I really wanted to kind of practice my French, but also kind of experience living in Europe. And I did that voluntarily. Right before I took this job, I was actually living in Tunisia, in North Africa, which is, you know, kind of a different place, but I wanted to experience that. And all those things, I think, have really kind of contributed to the person I am today. And I'm a much better person because of those experiences. And the second thing, um, is that I think you, you need to find something that you're really, really passionate about. Um, as you can imagine, just like most of you, my parents would have preferred that I was a doctor or an engineer. You know how Ethiopian parents are. <laughs> doctor when you engineer, that's it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, those are the two things that come to their mind. And I was really good in sciences, and, and I think they did it because they want the best for you. They know you're living in a foreign country, and when you tell them, I want to study political science, they're like, what? You know what I mean? It's like, you know what I mean? Political science, to do what? You know, because for them, if you study medicine or you become an engineer, you can, you know, find a job and have a career, and, you know, they feel safe that you will have a good future, and that's what they want for you. But I knew, you know, sort of early on that, that I would, you know, that wasn't my path. And, and I think if I had chosen that path and studied engineering or medicine, I would have probably done okay, but I think I would have probably been sort of an average doctor, an average engineer, and not really been happy uh, because that, I wasn't passionate about that. And, and I'm really glad I, you know, I disappointed my parents. I know when I changed my major, I mean, my dad really didn't talk to me for a couple of weeks, months, but, you know, soon enough, your parents would always forgive you because they love you. So I did that, and I'm really, really glad I did that because I think I wouldn't be here today um, at, at my job if I hadn't done that. And the third thing is never stop learning. Um, just because you have a graduate degree, just because even you have a PhD, you should not think that that's it. You've reached your goal and you should stop learning. You, if you have passion about something, you go to a lecture. To this day, you know, um, whether it's about African policy, about development, when there's somebody in town that I really admire, um, like Dr. Ngozi from um, Nigeria, for example, I go see her, I want to hear her talk, I want to hear her views about things because every time I have those conversations, I, I walk away learning something new. So I think every day is an opportunity for all of us to learn. And the fourth thing is if you, if you know something and you want something out there and you can't find it, sometimes you need to create it because maybe it's not out there. Um, I remember um, in graduate school after my first year, I really wanted to spend a summer working for a private company that did some, you know, that has some commercial interests in Africa. And, and I was looking around for inter internship opportunities, and unfortunately at the time I was not a U.S. citizen yet, actually. I had just a green card, so there was a lot of sort of, a lot of the things that interested me, whether it was the State Department or things like that, were not open to me because I wasn't a citizen yet. So I was looking around trying to find, you know, an internship, 
somewhere in Africa, or at least with a business in New York or Washington that did things in Africa. And I just, there wasn't any advertised. And so I ended up spending a lot of time at the library just going through sort of Africa-related magazines and just trying to find, you know, companies that sort of interested me and see what they were doing, where they were headed. And you know what? I just decided I'm going to write a letter. Just go out and, you know, on the limb and write a letter to a bunch of companies. They weren't advertising, by the way, for an intern or anything. I just started writing and saying, hey, you sound like an amazing company. And actually, one of them I ended up working for, by the way, is your previous speaker, Noah Samara. Yeah. And they had just raised uh, a large fund you know, to launch their commercial operation, the satellite operation. I wrote to their HR department and I said, this sounds like a fabulous company. I want to spend my summer working for you. And they're like, we don't have an internship program. And, um, and I said, well, you know, I'm really willing to do a lot of work, do a lot of research. And they asked me, can you write your job description and what you would spend your summer doing? And I did. And I just I wrote a job description. And then it's interesting, the HR said, how much do you think you want to get paid? And I was like, what? <laughs> that was really hard, but you know, I just, you know, I was like, I want to you know, sell my shop short, but I don't want to ask for too much too, so I talked to a lot of people. And I gave him, the HR director a package, and guess what? I was their first intern that summer. And then after that, they realized that internship programs are actually great. I spent the summer working there, and it was amazing. And actually, the director you know, thought I did a good job, that he sent me back to school with a brand new laptop and said I could work for them part-time from you know, my second year in school. So that, you know, when I think about that opportunity, that job never was there. It was never advertised, it was never, it was something I just created because I really wanted to spend that summer working in Africa, but working in the private sector. So sometimes things that you really want um, are, may not be there. Even the summer that I spent in Geneva, when I think about it, and you know, you guys are actually, kind of, the young ones here at least are lucky. These are the days of, you know, you have the internet, you have a cell phone. I mean, I don't want to give up my age, but, <laughs> but in those days, looking for a summer internship meant going to the library and going through the classified, the paper. There was no Google. There was no devx.com. There was no monster.com. There was nothing like that. And, and I wanted to spend the summer in Geneva, just to get back to Geneva. Um, you know, Geneva, if you've been there, people, it's, it's expensive. And my parents are not trust fund, <laughs> I'm not trust fund family or anything. So I couldn't really afford to spend a summer in Geneva uh, working for free because a lot of you, UN internships are actually free. So it, it's, and it, it's pretty difficult to spend a summer in Geneva. So I actually was looking for a paid consulting job, you know, just for those three months. And I managed to get it because of this international uh, paper that used to come out every two weeks, and you little, I literally spent every single lunch uh, lunch break for several weeks uh, when I worked on Capitol Hill, going to this bookstore, going to buy this not the, to buy the paper, but just spend my lunch because I think the paper was like eight dollars and fifty cents, and I just did not want to pay for that. So I would just spend my lunch break at this at this place, looking through the summer sort of you know consulting um, jobs until one day, you know, I applied to one that I got. So, you know, sometimes you really have to create the opportunity. It may not be right there. You just don't expect to find sometimes, you know, just a classified paper, you apply for a job and you should get it. You know, sometimes you have to do a little bit extra. And then um, the fifth one, and I think a lot of the young um, Ethiopian professionals, you know, your organization does this a lot, have some mentors. You really do. I have some mentors that I meet with. Um, regularly. Some of them I meet once a month. Some of them are so busy um, that I meet twice a year, once a year, but I meet them regularly. And I don't meet them just when I need a job or when I need a reference. Those are actually my pet peeves because there's a lot of people I mentor, but I don't like it when they just call me when they need a law school application reference or you know they're looking for a job. It's nice to get an update once in a while from the people I mentee and say, you know what, I'm really happy with my job, I just got promoted, I'm doing this, just to give me an update. And some of them are good about that because I've given them that advice. But everybody needs a mentor. It doesn't matter whether you're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 because you can always learn from other people. And another thing is I think it's also important to mentor others. Just, you know, you can have mentors, but it's so important to mentor other people. Whether it's your brother's friend, whether it's your neighbor's, um, 
you know, son or daughter or, you know, the next generation also, no matter what you do in your career, I think everybody sort of looks up to what you do and they can learn from you. And as much as you also want mentors, it's also important to mentee other people. And um, the seventh rule I have is, I think, you know, be prepared, work hard. Nothing comes easy. I think there is no substitute for hard work. Whatever you're pursuing in life, um, try to be the best you can be. And I've done a lot of all-nighters, you know, when it's, um, when things have to get done, there's sacrifices to be made. And I, I don't know if my friend Doug is in the audience. Is he here? No. Um, he had just emailed me saying he was going to be here. He had this um, business idea a couple of years ago. Oh, there you are. <laughs> He's, he's been pushing this sort of, you know, idea, which I, I think highly about. And, you know, he's never, ever, he's one of those people also, who just never gives up because he's so passionate about um, what he's doing. And I know he's going to succeed. He's already succeeding. That's why I kind of, I didn't mean to pick on you. And the eighth thing is live your life like someone is watching you through a magnifying glass. It's actually something that the first congressman I worked for um, said to me, and I'm so glad I listened to him. Um, because I think it's just really important to live a very sort of ethical life and um, a very straightforward life. I think we're, we're not perfect, we all make mistakes, but I'm so glad I did that. And having been through two Senate confirmation hearings, one for President Obama and my previous job, actually I was nominated by President Bush, um, you know, it's amazing. Like, I'm so happy I did my taxes on time. <laughs> I'm so happy that my, you know, everyone that worked for me had a green card and was legal and I didn't have any illegal aliens. But, you know, those are the things, you know, you hear these testimonies and things like that. It's incredible, this stuff they, that comes up. I mean, they do very thorough vetting of your life. It's, it's almost a little bit too much. Um, when you go through this process and the fact that you lived a pretty, you know, decent life um, is very, very helpful. So, you know, I would encourage everybody to do that. And the ninth point is also have fun. You know, we spend so much of our time at work. Um, so you have to make the best of it. Um, two years ago at the White House Christmas party, um, I, I said to President Obama, you know, it's such a privilege to work for you, Mr. President. And he said to me something that really surprised me. He said, I hope you're also having fun with me. And, you know, I really, <laughs> and I didn't expect him to say that. And, you know, I kind of was thinking about it. And I said, yeah, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm having fun, you know. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's true. We spend so much time at work that, you know, if you enjoy what you do, if you're passionate about it, you would enjoy it. And if you don't, maybe it's, it's time to do something else that you really care about. Something that drives you, something that makes you want to wake up in the morning. I think that's important. And lastly, um, this may sound a little bit really basic, but be nice and be respectful. It's, um, it's maybe similar to my number eight point, but I honestly, um, I've met a lot of jerks <laughs> in my lifetime. And sometimes people feel just because they're a big boss that they have to be arrogant. And you don't have to be arrogant or mean to get the job done. And I think when, pe when you're nice, actually people want to work harder for you. I find that when you respect people, everybody from top to bottom, people work hard, they want to they wanna help you, they, they want to be there for you, and you actually get a whole lot more out of people by being nice. And I think I'm going to stop there, because those are the 10 things that I've, I've kind of lived by that have helped me. And I hope, you know, you enjoyed.